So today we're looking at a very polished and professional OpenSUSE 11.3. Now I realize this came out quite a while back. I think it came out in July, but uh, I feel that when it came out there was a few bugs and uh, for me it wasn't very usable on a day-to-day -day basis um, and I switched back to a Debian-based system. Having said that though, now here we are in December and I really feel like this distribution has come a long way in that time. After a fresh install, I had 96 security patches to apply and once those patches had all been installed, I was very impressed. Um, the KDE side is a big part to play as well and I will be doing a review of KDE at some stage at a later time, but as of right now I want to talk about GNOME. Now the GNOME edition of OpenSUSE 11.3 really comes across as a professional and polished distribution that you could use successfully in a workplace to do mission critical stuff. This isn't the cutting edge of GNOME, it's 2.30, uh, where obviously we're up to 2.32 already, and a lot of the applications are a few versions behind. Having said that, the software is extremely stable and I have not had a single application crash. First let's talk about look and feel. Let me say that the theme is very dark. The default GNOME theme for OpenSUSE is the Sonar theme. Now it's got a lovely green gradient as the as the title bar, as you can see here. The fonts, again, aren't the best looking in the world, but they are professional. They're functional and they work. I haven't had any problems as far as font smoothing goes. It's been a very pleasant experience. Um, I have had issues with font smoothing with KDE, but for the GNOME distribution, I'm quite impressed. The default backgrounds, they don't give you a lot. They only give you the uh, space slideshow. They give you a green leaf one, which is typical of a lot of GNOME desktops. This one is the one from 11.2, which again, very dark, very professional, and I really like this one in particular. It really conveys that professional stability that OpenSUSE is famous for. So, now let's talk about the menu. Now, I know some people don't like the menu. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. It's functional, it works. Yes, it could be improved, but I'm not going to go too much into it. Basically, the only quibble I have with it is that when you search for something like, let's say, new document, instead of filtering and giving you the results in, in a filtered inside the menu, you press enter and it brings up the tracker search tool, which uh, then gives you the search results. It gives you different applications that you could use, and uh, beginner's guide, uh, and different and different documents, all filtered out by their um, by their categories. Now that's all very good, um, but again, it's opening up another dialogue and kind of uh, separates the experience from the user. Same thing with more applications. You would kind of expect the menu to kind of slide across here with more filtered categories as to what applications you could run, but clicking on more applications brings up an application browser. And again, this is very functional, and I think a lot of people would find this useful if they were trying to find an application fast and uh, they weren't exactly sure which category to look under. It gives you all the categories there at a glance and then you can filter them and it just simply highlights the ones that you've installed. Now, bear it in mind, I've installed a lot of extra uh, applications. Not heaps, but I have installed some extras. Uh, Google Chrome, Opera, uh, XChat was installed by default, but a lot of multimedia stuff and things like that. But let's, we'll get into that later. Okay, next I want to talk about system management. Now, by default we have the GNOME Control Center, which, and again, this is the same centralized approach that we saw with the more applications, and also with YAST. And we're going to talk about YAST in a little bit, but you can see the similarities here between all these windows, is that they're all filtered, they're all categorized, and they all look very similar. This is great from a central user standpoint, used to Windows, where everything comes in its own control panel. So I think this is good for some people, not so good for others, but it definitely takes a different stance from others like Ubuntu, which generally like to put everything menu-based. So from that perspective, it's good. Right, let's get back to the control center. Now, the, control, the GNOME control center handles everything to do with the individual user. Anything that the user can change with his or her own user account can be done here. So for instance, we've got appearance, and we can change the themes, we've got uh, file management, we've got desktop effects, we've got email searching, and all sorts of fun stuff. Anything to do with the system at a root level is handled by YAST. Now YAST is the OpenSUSE or SUSE specific uh, system management tool that has been around for a very long time. This is what makes OpenSUSE OpenSUSE. So, in YAST, you can configure all your various hardware. As you can see, it's probing all my different hardware now to see what changes I can make to them. 
You can also um, configure network devices, network services. You can configure all your different ser servers here. Windows domain membership, which is very, very useful in a corporate situation, which is why I really feel that OpenSUSE is geared towards enterprise, geared towards those working in business situations that need a high class desktop to get them through their work. Now, you've also got security and users for your firewall and your local security and you've also got your software package management and your system management such as your sysconfig editor, kernel settings, system backup, system restoration which is excellent, partitioner, date and time, bootloader, you name it and we've also got the hypervisor and tools for virtualization. So we can go through all the different hardware here um, that is on the system and you can troubleshoot it from this uh, from this dialog. It's very similar to the device manager in uh, in the Windows world so it is extremely useful. Now, as a part of YAS is the YAS package manager. You can fire this up from the uh, YAS control center that we were just looking at earlier, but they put a shortcut on the menu for you, so that's helpful. So in here, you've got all your packages which you want. Now, let me start off by saying in the default mirrors for OpenSUSE, there are not a lot. In the non-open source, we've got Java, Antivirus, Flash Player, GStream, MP3 Player, and Opera, pretty much. Oh, and Spider Oak, which is like Ubuntu One or Dropbox. It's their online backup tool, which is excellent that they bundled that in. In their open source section, they have uh, 9,000 packages, roughly. So they don't have a lot of packages in their default re repositories. Having said that, you can configure your repositories and add a bunch of them. Now you can see the ones I have enabled here. I've got Google Chrome, Pac-Man, VideoLand. Once you have VideoLand, Pac-Man repositories enabled, you will get everything that you need as far as codecs, multimedia applications, all the latest stuff pulled from these two repositories and your desktop is ready to go. So back in the software manager, it categorizes them into all the different desktop categories. So GNOME, KDE, XFCE, and uh, admin tools, etc., multimedia, all that fun stuff. And as far as uh, installing and searching for stuff goes, it's quite easy. Record, we'll go down here, we'll install, record my desktop. It selects all the dependencies automatically, you click apply, and then it says it's going to use up this much disk space, close the software manager when it's done. This might be a bit confusing to new users, but I think it's okay, really. It's, it just saves them closing another window. So, disk space required, 508 kilobytes. Download size, 151 kilobytes. We hit apply, and off it goes. It grabs that package. Sometimes I've found that uh, here in Australia, the network can be a little bit slow, but in the long run, it's nothing really to worry about. In, in updating the system and uh, getting the right mirrors for the OpenSUSE repositories, and you get a very fast uh, system. As you can see, it's writing the configs. And four, three, two, one, and a half, we're done. And there it is. Now, we'll go into more applications, and up the top, new applications, GTK record my desktop, it's all there. Um, another touch that I really, really appreciate with OpenSUSE is the default installation of GNOME Do. GNOME Do is the most awesome application launcher you've ever come across. Type in anything, and press enter, and you're ready to go. You can type in the name of folders, such as downloads, or maybe documents, and away you go. As far as default applications goes, you get Firefox as your default web browser. You get uh, Banshee as your default. You get Banshee as your default uh, media manager, and you get FSpot as your default photo manager. Now, obviously, this is quite different to Fedora and uh, Ubuntu in the fact that they're not steering clear of the mono applications, as there are many, many mono applications available. They also install things like Tomboy Notes uh, and a bunch of other mono applications that have been really uh, proven uh, stable software, and they also provide you with OpenOffice and the GIMP on the GNOME install. They also provide you with Inkscape, uh, Pigeon, and Empathy. They give you the choice of both. We're running uh, OpenOffice 3.2. They provide you with their own custom splash screen. And OpenOffice 3 I found to be very stable, no issues with it at all. Overall, it's a very professional release. Now that it's stabilized out, I'm really happy to use this as my go-to uh, dis distribution when I need to get work done. So I'd have to say the OpenSUSE GNOME Edition I'm very happy with. I've had some issues with the KDE Edition, but as far as the GNOME Edition goes, 
a lot of people are concerned that it doesn't get enough attention and that it really gets neglected in the face of KDE4, but I really believe that's not the case and uh, I've been very impressed with OpenSUSE as the GNOME desktop. OpenSUSE is definitely geared towards those who need quality software. They need a large quantity of quality software that's ready to go, that's stable, it's tested, and it's not going to crash out on you. I believe it's geared towards those who like simplicity, they don't like a lot of eye candy, they need a machine to get work done, and this machine does not distract you with system errors, it does not distract you with extra fluff that it doesn't need, it's lean, it's mean, it gets the job done, and I think that's what sets OpenSUSE apart, it's a professional power user distro that is ready to get your work done.